We have already discussed a basic melodic analysis in my previous video about happy birthday. You know that you should identify and discuss the key, the time signature, the length and structure of the melody, the range, some implied harmony from the first and last notes, saying which degree of the scale they are, and giving a brief history of the piece if you recognize it. Regarding range, I'd like to say that C3, C4, and so on are not really standard designations. It might be more descriptive to say low C, high C. That way, your description depends on the context of the melody you are discussing. Here are a few more things to consider in your analysis. The contour. You should comment on the shape of the phrase and which direction it moves in. It could go up, an ascending phrase, or go down, a descending phrase. It could also be quite static or flat, which means it doesn't really ascend or descend very much. You should also say if the melody is smooth or angular. To get an idea about the shape, think of how it would look if you connected the dots, like in one of those puzzles for children. Most melodies are a combination of ascending and descending melodic lines. There may also be repetition of the melodic shape. For example, the minuet in G by Christian Petzold. This is also a very good example of mixing stepwise motion and leaps. Sometimes there are scale fragments within the melody. The beginning of the Christmas carol, Joy to the World, starts with a complete descending major scale. You should also consider how the melody moves. It could be stepwise, like going up steps or stairs, and we call this a conjunct melody. A good example of that is the final movement of Beethoven's Ninth Symphony. You could also consider this to be a fairly static phrase. The melody could also have leaps. We call this a disjunct melody. Leaps tend to make a stepwise melody more interesting. A good example is Somewhere Over the Rainbow, which starts with a one octave leap from low C to high C. If a melody is almost all disjunct, not mixed in with conjunct melody, you can say that it is angular. A good example is the violin line from Astor Piazzolla's Spring Tango. A harmony could be delineated by the melody. For example, Mozart's Eine Kleine Nachtmusik. The first two bars delineate, or outline, a G major triad, G, B, D. Since we are in the key of G major, that is a tonic chord. In bar 3 and 4, a D major chord is delineated, which is the dominant 7th chord in this example. You could also identify motifs. These are short melodic or rhythmic fragments that repeat and develop. Perhaps the best example of a melodic motif is the opening of Beethoven's Fifth Symphony. There could also be sequences or patterns. That's when a motif or short melody repeats at a higher or lower pitch. For example, the Christmas carol Ding Dong Merrily on High 
has a descending melodic sequence. I hope that helps you in knowing what to look for in a melodic analysis and how to correctly express what you're analyzing. See you next video!